All right, guys, today we are going to <clears throat> learn how to actually solve an equation. So get out your notes and write down today's I can sentence. All right, and that is going to be I can use a five point answer. To solve an equation. I can use a five-point answer to solve an equation. All right, and if you haven't figured it out already, every equation that we do is going to be worth five points. There's five different things that you have to show. Okay, so let's start with an insanely easy one, one that you can probably do in your head, mental math. X plus three equals five. And we're just going to do this real easy one to kind of highlight the process and what the five things are that we need to show. Okay, x plus three equals five. To solve an equation, any equation, there's three steps you have to follow. The first step is to use the opposite operation. The opposite operation. All right, the operations in math are um, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. So if you look over here, they are doing x plus 3. So right under the plus, we're going to write its opposite, which is minus. All right, the second step is to write the same number. The same number. Whatever number they are adding with, we are going to subtract with. So they did plus 3, so we're doing minus 3. Okay. Um, now, the third step is called other side. Other side. Other side. So, whatever we did to one side of the equation, we have to copy on the other side of the equation. And when I say other side, I kind of look at this as our equal sign makes a wall here. And if I wrote minus 3 on one side of the wall, I need to write minus 3 on the other side of the wall. Now if I'm looking at what happens, right? if I have a plus 3 over here and a minus 3, that's like someone's given you $3, and then they are immediately taking it away, and you're left with nothing. They cancel each other out. So the minus 3 and the plus 3, they cancel each other out. And on this side of the wall, all we're left with is our variable x. So I'm going to copy it down here, x. Our equal sign is still there. It didn't go anywhere. And now on the other side of the wall, I have this math problem, 5 minus 3, which is 2. So my answer is x equals 2. x equals 2. And if I wanted to check my answer, you know, I go back up into the equation and put a 2 where the x is. So instead of x plus 3, it's 2 plus 3 equals 5. And is that true? Yes. So I know that my answer is correct x equals 2. Alright, so those are our, our three steps. Opposite operation, same number, other side. And that is what we're going to use to solve any and every equation out there. Alright, so let's look at some actual more difficult examples here. Example number 2. Alright, let's talk about um, n minus 32 equals 60. n minus 32 equals 60. All right, so opposite operation. In this equation, they are using subtracting, so we're going to use adding. Okay. They are subtracting with the number 32, so we're going to add with the number 32. Our equal sign kind of makes a wall, and I need to copy what I wrote on this side of the wall on the other side of the wall, plus 32. 
my um, minus 32 and plus 32 cancel each other out. So what I'm left with on the side of the wall is my n. So I'm going to copy it down, n. It didn't go anywhere. My equal sign. And then this math problem, 60 plus 32, gives me 92. So my answer is n equals 92. For that to be true, n would have to be 92 because 92 minus 32 equals 60. All right, let's do another one. Let's do, this will be example number three. Okay, let's do um, t plus 15 equals mm, 71. t plus 15 equals 71. Okay, opposite operation. They're adding, so we're going to subtract. Same number they're using. They add 15, so we're going to subtract 15. My equal sign makes a wall. And I'm going to copy what I wrote on this side of the wall on the other side of the wall. Minus 15. So here I get my variable that's left because these cancel out. So I get my t equals. And as side work, I'm going to do 71 minus 15. So I make sure I have it right. I need to borrow 11 minus 5 is 6. And 6 minus 1 is 5. So t equals 56. Okay, example number four. Let's look at a multiplying one. All right, so let's say we have 3x equals 12. 3x equals 12. The same three steps apply. We're going to use the same three steps every time, no matter what. Um, all right. So they are doing times, so that means we're going to need to do divide. So 3 times x, do you see it? 3 times x. So we're going to need to divide. So we're going to use our division fraction bar. And we're going to divide. We're going to use the same number they're using. They're multiplying with 3, so we're going to divide with 3. Your equal sign makes a wall, so I'm making my wall here. I wrote divide by 3 on this side of the wall, so we need to write divide by 3 on that side of the wall. Now, when I multiply something by 3 and then divide it by 3, those things cancel out. So that all I have left is my letter x, because nothing happened to it, my equal sign, and this division problem, 12 divided by 3, which is 4. So x equals 4. <clears throat> Why don't you try this division one? Example number five. Try this on your own. Or this multiplying one. Um, let's do seven um, y equals 42. You probably already know the answer, but go ahead and pause the video and show me the three steps. And when you're done, hit play. All right, you should be done by now. So let's take a look at how we solve this one. All right, opposite operation. They're doing seven times y. So I'm gonna do divide. And I'm gonna use the same number they're using, which is seven. My equal sign is a wall, so I'm building my wall. And I'm gonna copy what I wrote on the other side of the wall. I wrote divide by seven. Now multiply by 7 and divide by 7 are opposites, so they cancel each other out. So on this side of my wall, I'll 